guess where I am? You guessed? Glencoe. So, this is Glencoe, and this is probably one of the most famous shots in photography, certainly in Great Britain. And we're here at sunset, and it is spectacular. I'm on my way to a workshop that I'm running from tomorrow, and I've stopped off here, and actually two of the attendees in the workshop are I've met me here, we're going to do a bit of photography before the workshop starts. And it's stunning, it's so spectacular, but it is actually, this location, one of the most difficult shots to shoot. Not because I'm trying to get something original, I don't care about originality, because I, I care about taking something that means something to me that I care about. If I was the first person here, then it would be original, so I just forget all the other shots that have been taken. I've not looked at them, purposely haven't looked at them, and I'm trying to create just a good shot but it's difficult because there's this lots of trees with no leaves on there's quite a lot of complicated foreground but there's this amazing mountain that draws your eye in the background so what I'm going to try and do is go down here and try a few different positions a few different locations to try and get a combination of this amazing waterfall which I'll just go down and show you and this amazing mountain but I'm going to have to get this tree in. So it's about trying to make it as simple as possible and trying to just reduce these complicated elements in the shop. So just to try and give you a little bit of an idea of scale, I'm shooting with a 24 millimeter lens this video now and my video and my camera is literally 10 meters away from me no maybe eight meters away from me and you still can't see the top of the mountain behind me it's so vast and so close to this waterfall so what i'm going to try and do is get this waterfall in this mountain in and i've got all this mess of these trees here and it, and it should be such a simple, powerful composition, but with all this mess, it just makes it just not look great. So I've got my wellies on, as you can see. I'm gonna go into the water and see if I can get low, because I can't really, see, I'm not high enough to be able to get the, 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 the river in the background. So I'm not gonna get that mid ground, I'm just gonna get the foreground and then the mountain, but I think, I think that's gonna work. So I'm gonna go down into the water, try and get the shot from the water. And I've gotta have a 16 millimeter lens on my full frame camera or a 10 millimeter on my Fuji X-T3. Now I've already taken some shots on my X-T3 and they look really good. And what worked really well was a very, very long exposure of about 30 seconds. Because the clouds moving across the mountain just look fantastic, in fact, it's just looking spectacular now, the clouds coming across the mountain, so I'm going to go and take some shots and I'll, I'll get back to you when I'm set up. Okay, so it's good to have wellies on because I'm now in the, in the actual water. What I'm going to try and do, hopefully you can hear me down here, is without sitting on the thingy is I'm going to try and get a shot from down here so hopefully I'm going to be able to give you a, a, a rough idea of what it's like and it's just really more dramatic as you go lower and get low to the water I've still got my polarizing filter on my um, X-T3 which I'm taking these shots on and it's just a question of just getting the exposure right and, and messing about with filters to get the exposure right and try and some, one at one second, one at five, one at 15 and one at 30. So I'm going to use different filters, ND filters, to try different exposure lengths. And I'm also going to mess with the aperture a little bit just to control that. But what we need is light on the mountain in the background because that will just make the image. So the other thing is when you're putting your tripod in a river, you've got to be super careful. You don't really want it close to the flow of water because it's going to move it too much and you don't want to sit in the water either because that's a really bad idea you can see it's moving there so that's just not good really so i just want to move this leg until i get to a position that i know that it's stable which is good i've rotated my um, polarizing filter so i get rid of the glare and it makes a really big difference with and without the polarizing filter 
So I'll take two shots, one with and one without, and just show you the difference. I'm focusing on the mountain again and I've got it on F11 which means that everything's going to be in focus, it needs to be in focus and actually the things in front of me are blurred because of the water movement anyway so if it's not in focus it's not really going to matter too much. Amazing time in Glencoe taking a picture of that sort of iconic spot. Unfortunately, we had this amazing sunbeam that came up the side of the mountain. You saw some of the, the, the drone footage that I took. Well, whilst I was doing that drone footage, was the best conditions for doing the photography. So, note to self, don't fly your drone when you've done all the hard part of setting up your your shot and, and then miss the best conditions. But I think I still got a good shot and I really like this this black and white image here. I think it just really captures the the sort of essence of the day really well with this really fast flowing water. And it looks really good printed on this pr platinum berater paper. I really like sort of this berater paper for, um, which is almost like a semi-gloss, it looks like traditional film paper for my black and whites because I suppose it's just getting back to my roots really, which which is starting in black and white photography in a dark room, printing on very, very similar paper. It was Ilford then, um, and this is photo speed paper. So I just wanted to show you how I converted this to black and white. So I'm just gonna quickly go into this now. So here's the original image, and you can see that I have exposed it pretty well um, in one exposure. I'm probably just pushing the limits of the dynamic range of the camera here, but there is nothing really blocked in the shadows and there's nothing burnt out in the highlights, so I've really pushed the histogram as best I could. So the first thing that I'll do is just convert it to black and white. So I'm just gonna click black and white and it's gonna convert it to black and white. Now I can edit this conversion to black and white using this black and white tab here and go and tweak the colors, which I'll do in a minute. But the first thing that I want to do the first thing I want to do is just do some basic editing here. Now, you can do this all in curves, but I prefer to use a combination of these here, which is effectively editing a curve and then maybe some curve adjustments. That's not what everybody uses. I like doing that. So I'm gonna drop the highlights right down. And then when I've done that, I'm gonna just add some more exposure in. I am gonna increase the shadows a tiny bit. I'm going to increase the whites quite significantly. I'm just going to switch this on because I don't want to burn the whites out. Go to about there. I'm going to add a little bit of clarity and then I'm just going to do some local adjustments. So I'm going to click this graduated filter tool here, just reset it. And I'm going to do a graduated filter on the sky because I want to add a lot more dynamic elements into the sky here. So I'm going to reduce the exposure, increase the contrast, and increase the clarity of the sky. And then I always add two graduated filters on the sky, so I'm gonna add another one here. There we go. Reduce the exposure, increase the contrast a little bit more, and then maybe just reduce the blacks and increase the whites, which is effectively adding a bit of contrast at either end. Yeah, so that's good. And I'll probably just add another curve just down here, and I'm doing this quick just for the demo, and I'm just going to increase the whites a little bit, and then just, yeah, so. And I'm not bothered about that burnt out there, because that's where the sun was. So, that's not far off. So the final thing I want to do is just alter the tone curve. I'm just gonna, bring out some more whites. Again, I'm not too bothered about that and that there, so I can switch. Um, 
I don't want to bring up the blacks too much. So the next thing to do is I'm just going to crop it. So I want to crop out a little bit of the sky, a little bit of the foreground. And that isn't far off. So I've gone from that to that. So then the other thing to do, and on this image, because you can see there's not a huge amount of colour in the image, then I'm not doing a, a, a huge amount here in the, these, these um, how, I'm, how I'm interpreting the colours in this black and white, but you can see that there's usually in a landscape image that, that the yellow and the orange have quite a big impact on, on the areas of the image. On this one here, they're not really altering it very much. On, on most, Im most images where you've got more colour and you're converting it to black and white, you can have a really big impact with this. It's, it's effectively like putting an orange or a yellow or a red filter on the front of your lens when, when we used to take um, black and white films. Um, you can do it with a lot more accuracy and, and really control how those colours are turned into black and white tones in your image. Really simple. Um, the key was getting all that data in the histogram at the you know in, in that one shot because then I can I've got a lot of um, latitude to be able to do what I want with that image. So yeah, it was it was really easy. So I hope you enjoyed that. Before I go, I just wanted to say that you know after I went to Glencoe, we went to Sky and we had an amazing time in Sky. We took some fantastic photos. Now I didn't do a vlog when I was there. We didn't have time on the workshop. We were too busy fighting the elements because it was fairly horrendous weather, really windy. Um, and we went to all the sort of classic locations. We, we, we stayed in these amazing huts in Sky as well, which were just fantastic. And we had such an amazing sunrise one morning. And, and here's a picture of us walking to, to, to the location to get some shots. And I'll leave you with uh, a little bit of B-roll from, from that location and some of the great shots that I got. It was really, really fantastic. And I've actually posted another Sky Workshop for 2019 now on my website. So if you're interested in going, then go and take a look. And I would say there's a place come available in the March um, Pharaoh's Workshop. I suspect that's going to go really quickly. So if you want to get on that Pharaoh's Workshop in March, then you've got a chance because somebody's had to pull out of it. So go and have a look at that as well. And until next Sunday, happy Christmas everybody. Bye. Down by the river all through the night Watching the stars